So there are some big changes coming up on Red Paladins and Dragonflight, especially with the AoE playstyle with a big push for Consecration. But does it work? Not really, but we'll get into it as long as with all the other Dragonflight talents on the third build of the Alpha. We're gonna take some of the positives, a lot of the negatives because there are a bunch, but overall you have to remember this has been tested on a level 60 Paladin with like minimal gear, not all the points were available to be spent and it's basically a couple of dungeons and a target dummy in uh, the current build, okay? So without further ado, let's get into the Red Paladin and Dragonflight Alpha. We're gonna kick it off with what kind of works, well mostly works, okay? So one of the, the most happiest joy joy times that I've seen since I've been playing a Paladin for a long time now is Exorcism making a comeback. And it's looking actually good. It's a little bit of a different version now. I mean, it's it still has an initial hit based on attack power, but it also will leave a dot for 12 seconds. Now, this dot can also spread to other targets if those targets are in consecration. I tested this out uh, in, uh, in the dungeons, play with it. I spread the dot, it worked amazing. To granted, the damage wasn't all that impressive, but we have to remember this is still like uh, very, very early and tuning is subject to be happening i don't know somewhere maybe after two or three months of all of the testing we still have lots of classes to come out on on this testing ground for the talent so but it works mechanically it works and it's a fun addition back and it's it's not going to proc off of art of war or anything like that right it's so you're still going to have blade of wrath procs and everything exorcism is going to be its own little thing there's also boundless judgment um uh, quote unquote new talent this used to be back in the legion artifact Weapon, we had a trait on this, it's basically a 25% chance to have Judgment hit another target, which is really good for Cleave. Back in Legion, I, I believe this was 50% to have your Judgment like spread out and stuff, but still pretty decent. Maybe this can be enhanced in future builds, or maybe with tier sets moving along the expansion. Long Arm of the Law is also back, and when I first saw it, I was like super, super happy because this is basically something that made our mobility a little bit better, and we used to love it as reds. Now, basically, judgments give you a 20% increase on movement speed for two seconds. It it works. I mean, you can definitely fill it, although on a short duration. But the main problem with it is why the hell is it? In, in the AOE path. I mean, sure, you sometimes need a little bit more mobility in dungeons, but traditionally, like uh, at least by the design of the raids for the last four years, you need a lot of mobility to get around in those big ass rooms and raids. So why is it on the AOE path? I don't know, maybe this can change. There's also on the general paladin talent tree, uh, the new sacrifice talent, basically the blessings and everything that used to be more or less baseline are now in the, the general paladin talent tree. And for blessing of sacrifice, there's a new enhanced talent, which is called recompense. Now, this will enable 50% of the damage trans that will be transferred on you will also be placed on your judgment as bonus holy damage or a word of glory heal. Now you can totally see this uh, being uh, exploited to the max if you like uh, sacrifice your tank and uh, use all of the damage enhancers as well. You can, you can probably to some degenerate uh, judgment damage, but well, we'll just have to see. On paper, it looks good. I tried it out. It didn't really seem to be that amazing. Yeah, short sure, judgment hit a little bit harder after I placed my sacrifice on the tank, but still uh, good intent, I guess. Uh, also, Tempest of the Lightbringer Legendary is now a talent node, but oddly enough, it's on the side where you would go for a more single target build. It's like basically on the path where you would uh, finalize with final verdict. And why is this there? I don't know. It looks like it from, from the initial design that the left side of the, the talent tree is more focused for AoE with, you know, lots of consecration enhancers and whatnot. And the right side is more of a single target. Uh, Tempest of the Lightbringer is here. Now, you, you have to do this weird zigzag to, to get to it, but, you know, it's a good thing that the Legendary is there as a talent node. Uh, Vir Virtuous Command Conduit is also placed on the AoE group, which, again, feels weird. Uh, this is yet another conduit that uh, would be very beneficial for 
single target, as we all know, but it's on the AoE path. Um, Seal of the Templar is an interesting one. This is on the General Palantry. This enables a bit of a range playstyle, but it kind of forces you to stay in Crusader Aura, right? And what this does is like you gain three yards range for Crusader Strike, Templar's Verdict, and Hammer of Justice. It's it's interesting, although if you're gonna have like Crusader Aura and uh, your group really needs that uh, Devotion Aura, it's gonna be a pain. Maybe you're gonna be in with two more Paladins in the group. I don't know. You can definitely see this maybe more be more used in uh, the raid because you're gonna have more paladins over there. A great addition is actually the four set and two set bonuses from live. So the four set bonus is now Talon Note and it, it, granted it is nerfed to 35% chance to have Art of War reset Wake of Ashes instead of uh, Blade. Uh, and the two set bonus from life is like very, very deep in the tree uh, and it also has two ranks. So the first rank you get two seconds of Seraphim and uh, uh, the second rank you're gonna get four seconds of Seraphim. These more or less are some of the positives with, you know, a little bit of question marks, especially with, with the, you know, Tempest of the Lightbringer and Virtuous Command being basically, you know, in the wrong side of the path, at least from what we know their philosophy is. It's kind of weird because uh, most of the quote unquote uniqueness of the Paladin uh, is basically on the Paladin tree. We'll get to like stuff that doesn't work. So we we have Divine Toll with Divine Resonance, but at least for AOE, without the Ringing Clarity Conduit, it just feel that it does, I don't know, one more judgment and can maybe do well in Cleave, but it, it really it really feels bad. Like uh, if you're gonna have Divine Toll over there with Divine Resonance and all of that, I think Ringing Clarity is a must, uh, definitely. Because if not, it's gonna feel very, very weak. And you, you, you would usually take this like in Mythic Plus and stuff. Sanctified Brad uh, is basically the Prot Paladin version, so no AoE damage there. Uh, I'm hoping to have some way of getting the, that Red Paladin version in future builds, maybe f with a new talent node that enables that on the, the spec tree or something like that. You just won't take it right now because it, it, it doesn't do the AoE damage. Maybe you can take it for the extension of, of Wings, sure, but it's still very early to call. Uh, there's not not really that much to take from the, the Holy or Pro Tree from the general talents. Maybe Blessing of Spell Warding uh, would be a thing. Um, also, I, I still see Retribution Aura being there. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, granted, okay, granted, it has changed a bit. And this is not yet implemented in the alpha, but... Uh, apart from, you know, that part, which I really don't like when a party or Ray member within 40 yards would die, you gain uh, wings for 8 seconds. Now, there's also a component where when uh, a, a party member or ray member within 40 hours takes more than 50% of their health in damage, you get Seraphim for 6 seconds. Which, this is pretty cool. This part I like, okay? Uh, it also cannot occur more than once 30 seconds, but this paired up with the 2 set bonus, I mean, it's looking pretty decent. Just the, the fact that you're still... There's some, some weird ass incentive to have people die in order to, for you to deal more damage is weird. I get the whole thing about paladins avenging their fallen partners or whatever. Uh, but still, uh, at the end of the day, objectively, you want people to die so you can get more wings up. That's just how it works. Um, there's... Okay, let's, let's get to this. So th there is a very big push on the talents for a consecration build. Uh, there's lots of enhancing consecration nodes, but it's not tuned and it's it's not worth talking about that much since we are like all, all the numerous consecration I took all, all, all of them and the damage was shit you we, we will get to it once we have some proper tuning going but it feels like the the consecration damage is tuned as on live ticks are really poor and as much as you buff everything up and get like procs from blade of wrath to spawn consecration at your target and all of that and having like two consecrations at the same time it's still shit so we'll talk about it more once they get their tuning properly uh avenging rat has its 20 percent crit increase removed and in order to get that back you have to choose between it and crusade i, I think it's pretty shit they split wings like that i mean uh it's it i get this vibe where for the paladin tree at least for red they like split it up a bunch of things and and removed like the majority of baseline stuff to put it into talents sure this happened to a lot of the specs but i don't feel it happened to the same extent i don't know there's also like leodrin's 
Fury as a capstone uh, feels very underwhelming. Um, I mean, it's not like the greatest thing in the world, especially for a capstone. I wouldn't mind seeing this as a, a talent note somewhere similar to like, like Tempest of the Lightbringer. Uh, but this is a capstone, right? And it also bugs currently. Like if you pick it, Crusade doesn't work anymore. I kind of flipped out in the dungeon. Now, Red Paladin is still lacking a exclusive and very unique, or at least somewhat if a raid buff. I've seen this push on a lot of the classes and specs in Dragonflight having some sort of raid utility. This is one major complaint. I mean, if you're gonna give all the specs something, Red also has to have something unique to it. I mean, um, you can have like, the so-called argument for Red Paladin utility, right? It's like, you sure, cleanse toxins and lay on hands and all of that. But now, in order to get those, um, you have to really dig deep into the general Paladin talent tree, right? They're quite expensive. But plus, you have to, like, uh, sacrifice some throughput from there to get those. And it's not really worth it as compared to other specs. Not to mention that it doesn't look that Red Paladins were going to have something... Uh, different or unique that the other two specs won't bring to the table. This has been the same old story for a long, too long, too long. I mean, there has to be something unique for Red Paladins, okay? Something that will incentivize some groups or some fights to get a Red Paladin. And I'm saying this again in the context of their design philosophy for a lot of the specs where they do have some sort of raid utility, okay? You can talk about Blessing of Spell Warding, sure, you can take that as red now, but I'm not sure this will convince any group to bring a red paladin like mandatory there. You can still have a, a holy and a prop paladin to pick those and it would make a little bit more sense, right? Also, one of the biggest complaints uh, for me as well, who have like mostly main red paladin, is like a clear defensive option. And I, I really don't want to get started on a debate about Divine Shield and all that, please, or Shield of Vengeance. Shield of Vengeance is still looking like an offensive ability, okay? Like a clear defensive, and this was like a great opportunity to maybe bring back Divine Protection. I felt that was always neat and it had some uses. Never saw it like for the last two expansions and, and the, never saw it and it, it could have made a comeback. Um, I can see like maybe borrowing Art and Defender from the Prot Paladin side, that could also work. People, some people tend to believe that Red Paladins are, are tanky, but not, no, they're very, very squishy and basically can die to one shots, no problem. So uh, this, is, this has been lacking for a long time and I think one of the biggest, biggest gripes or maybe biggest feedback we can give for the current Red Paladin iteration is, okay, something that would enable some more defensive capabilities. Either a, a, a talent node, uh, something baseline, I don't know, or something borrowed from the other specs. And again, I'm thinking about Ardent Defender. Um, numbers wise, in the dungeons we tested, I was doing pretty good. And this was both AOE and single target. Granted, the biggest numbers uh, I pulled off from were still Templar's Verdict and Divine Storm. Even with all of the consecration nodes, I, I took all of them just to see if like, okay, consecration is the shit, but it's not, again, this is all due, due to tuning. It could be interesting. It could be nice. And I, I would be very down to trying a playstyle like this, no problemo, but currently alive really doesn't work. Uh, also, the tier set bonuses uh, are a great addition as well as exorcism, like in the in its new form, uh, long arm of the law also being there. Granted, it could it could use two ranks, right? It could be buffed to like 30% uh, uh, damage for four seconds or three seconds, something like that. It's only one rank and it's to 20% for two seconds. Still good, but I feel that they can do a little bit more with that. Um, there's also like the, the boundless judgment talent, which gives you a chance to spread your judgment on additional targets. That's also Really, really good for Cleave, uh, reminiscent of the old artifact trait, as I said in the beginning. So it's not all doom and gloom, uh, at least performance-wise, it does, it does still to be, you know, up there. Uh, well, excluding the overtuned evoker, okay, uh, we, we ain't talking about that. It's, it's a matter of one thing, so uh, Paladins, or Red Paladins specifically, don't have anything unique to them, as opposed to other specs. So that's one thing they have to like be able to bring to the spec. And I'm sure there's going to be future iterations on this, no problemo. There's still no clear defensive ability for Paladins and you can get like one shot, no, no problem. I'm not talking specifically PvP, 
also it feels that for for you to be able to get some throughput you have to like sacrifice a lot or in order to put it better in order to get some utility out of the general talent tree for paladins you have to sacrifice some throughput which is not really ideal like i think in in a decent not perfect world you should be able to like just drop some abilities or talent nodes where you wouldn't see them fit for the content you do and be able to take something else in from the utility department that that's how it should go uh it, it kind of sucks you have to like sacrifice some throughput in order to get things like aren't, aren't really necessarily considered that much useful sure they are but not to the extent like to raid raid by groups i'm talking about cleanse toxins lay on hands you know, all, all of those beautiful things, blessing of protection, the uh, spell wording, all of those come at a, at a sort of a big cost for Red Paladin. And it's not really cool. Plus the passing, I think like you can make an argument on the talents that maybe the middle zone is like more interesting, but it kind of falls from grace when you look at the sideways, if you like are focused on doing either dungeons going to the left side of the, the red tree, or if you're gonna go for like full single, single target and raids, uh, on the right side, there's talents there that shouldn't necessarily be uh, on that place. Uh, Divine Toll is a big issue. It does, doesn't really look that good without bringing clarity. Uh, it's it, it's a, it's a big, big wasted opportunity. I don't understand why they didn't put that conduit there. It just goes so hand in hand with everything. So it's very early to call like what the builds will be. Uh, you can check out the Hammer of Red Discord for, you know, a couple of theories, uh, but it's so early. And again, it's like level 60 paladins. Not all the points are available until you like 70. So that that's also a big factor. Testing the testing is like very limited right now. But uh, a lot of the specs got reworked, so I'm having faith for red paladins. Not for a total rework, but sure, there, there's a couple of things that definitely, definitely need to be addressed, and they're all like uh, pretty much on the same voice when you're looking at. You know, things like uh, Avenging Rat being split now into like its components being split, you know, and not having ringing clarity, uh, not having a defensive, clear defensive, not having a raid utility and, and, and so on. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, but overall, I think the, the feeling is with Copium or with Hopium, okay? So it's not bad. I, I was honestly expecting a lot worse. It's not uh, as worse. And again, numbers wise, really, really good. It's just the playstyle they want to push doesn't really work. And they have to make a little bit more synergy between the, the, the talents. Uh, that on top of everything I mentioned before. So, if you looked at the talent tree on Wallhead or seen some footage or whatever, let me know what you think. Let me know what you would like to see come back or they introduce some new things in the comments. Thank you for watching. I shall catch you next time. But I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wild Still, I play wild Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wild Still, I play wild It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wild